Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we are going to be covering Destructible Mesh, which was a request that I received. Um, somebody wanted to know how we could make a regular mesh something that was destructible. Um, so we're going to do that right now. So <clears throat> we don't really need anything fancy with this, we can do this with absolutely any static mesh that we want to do this with. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to be using one of the default cubes uh, because, well, why not? It's quick, simple, and easy. But you can do this with any mesh that you want. Uh, it's just the same process, just follow it along. You might need to make a few tweaks on the numbers depending on what you need inside your particular project, but I'll show you guys how to set this up as a basis. So, find where your, your mesh is inside of your lovely content folder, I've got my 1 meter cube here, and you're going to right click this and then in 4. in 4.15, which is what I'm working in right now, uh, right at the top you'll find create destructible mesh. Now this might be slightly lower down on previous versions, uh, but it is there in the right click menu, just this button here for create destructible mesh. We're going to click that and it's going to open up a new window with a, a new cube inside, as you can see here. And if I just minimize this down, you can see this is place this new cube which is underscore dm for destructible mesh inside the same folder as where our previous one was. So there's quite a lot of things in here that we need to need to mess about with. Um, you see here at the top we have this explode amount slider, this doesn't do anything right now and under preview depth we only have zero. Okay, Now that's that's just because we don't have a uh, another depth yet because we need to fracture the mesh but we're not going to do that quite yet. So. Let's do the damage first. Damage threshold is the amount of damage that's required to actually fracture this. We're going to leave this at, at 1. Um, if you want this to be a bit more resilient, you're going to have to add some more to this. Um, but that's that's perfectly fine. Um, we can um, experiment with this a little bit. Uh, damage spread is how easily the damage is going to go throughout the object. So whether, like, if you hit the front, is it going to crack the back as well? Or is it more resilient? So, like, if it's glass, you're probably going to crack all of it. Uh, if it's concrete, you're probably only going to crack the side that you're currently hitting. And this is how the damage spread is going to uh, going to help this. Uh, for now, though, just so that we can see a fracture, we're going to set this to 1, which means it's going to spread across the entire radius. We're going to enable impact damage, and we're going to set the impact damage to 1. So we get full damage from the impact and the default impact damage depth we're going to leave at zero and then the custom impact resilience we're going to leave alone. Now debris lifetime we're going to change the maximum lifetime down to five because we don't want the debris to last too long. If you've got a lot of this uh, obviously each one's going to be a new little bit of mesh um, and it's going to eventually cost you performance. So I'm going to show you guys how we actually make these uh, despawn. Uh, which is something I've noticed uh, other people don't seem to show you guys. So, we're going to scroll down a little bit to flags here, and under flags we have debris timeout. Now we're going to click this. We're going to turn this on. Um, and what this is going to do is, this is going to allow us to make the the chunks that we create disappear. Um, because we don't want them to sit there infinitely. Excuse me, I just had to cough. I muted my mic, because you know. Don't want to blow your ears out. Now, just ticking this isn't enough. We have to scroll down a little bit more, and then we have this tick box for enable debris. Now, debris timeout only works with debris, but when this is cracked into pieces, it, they're actually uh, called chunks and cells, uh, not debris. So what we have to do is we need to actually tell this uh, at what point these become debris. So we're going to enable debris, and then the debris depth is See, we've got these preview depths here. This is at what point these become debris. Now we're going to say at depth 1. Okay. Now the reason we're doing depth 1 is because we only want this to break once. Uh, we, we don't want to break this down into multiple smaller pieces after we've already broke it. So we're going to have debris depth 1, enable debris, ticked. Now down here we have the, I believe, I don't know how it's pronounced, I'm going to say Veronoi. <laughs> it's probably wrong. Uh, the cell site count. Now this is how many chunks this is going to break into. And then we have the random seed, which we're just going to stick a number into and it's just going to randomize it up a little bit. Now, up here on the left, if we click Fracture Mesh, there we are. You, well, we're not going to see anything yet because I left the explode amount at zero. That was a little bit a little bit curious. Now, you see here we've got this uh, preview depth has changed to preview depth 1. If we were to move along the explode amount now, you can see that we actually have this nice explodiness. 
and this is the way that these are going to chunk. Okay. Now, without the timer, so if we were to turn off enable debris real quick and we press save, if we go into the level and we just place one down and we just smash into it, blah, there we go, that will just, that will exist infinitely. It will just sit there. Even though we've given it a timeout time of one to, to five seconds, this is just going to sit here forever made up of multiple little pieces of mesh. But if we were to open this back up again, and we actually turn on the enable debris, and we have the debris depth at 1, and we press save, now it should time out between 1 and 5 seconds, it should disappear, because it's all broken down. There we go. So that's working. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tell this to enable physics because we actually want this to to react we don't want it to just fall apart we want physics to actually work for this so now we have physics on if we turn this on you see now gravity has already done its thing and pulled it down and it's broke okay so let's see that again gravity's done its thing gravity's broke its pieces oh no bad gravity but we want gravity on this because we actually want this to to respond to gravity we don't want the broken pieces to just float so to fix that what we're going to do is under the physics we actually have here physics this little drop down menu that show advanced we're going to take that and underneath start awake we're going to turn that off and what that's going to do is make sure that the physics isn't actually enabled until something interacts with it so now if we were to run into it you can see it explodes and that's when gravity and everything will start poof there we are yay it's explodey now it's a bit too explodey um, for my liking I mean a guy running into it shouldn't do that um, but that's just some of the stuff that we need to clear up so we're going to open and back up again and what we're going to do is we're actually going to increase the damage threshold I'm going to increase it quite high so what's that is that 100,000 mm, yeah 100,000 we'll press save and now I think our guy will knock it there we go but I, a guy can't break this on his own. I mean, that's a, it's a very, very light cube right now. I need to add some weight to that. But we, what we're going to do is we're just going to give it some mass. We're going to increase this to maybe 500. Just so that a guy can't bounce it around quite so easily. But now it might smash under its own weight. No. Good. It's still very, very light, isn't it? We. Oh, let's just ramp it way up to make sure this is there we go still really really slidey and that's because it's trying to break it doesn't know what to do um, and the reason it doesn't know what to do is because it's not having enough damage uh, enforced on it so what we can do is we can head on in and we can say accumulate damage under the flags and we're gonna tick this and basically what that's gonna do is every time damage is caused to this if the damage isn't enough to break it the cube will remember how much damage it's taken and eventually it will shatter now there we go Ta-da! so essentially now ticking that this thing has almost like a HP um, that you can't really see so let's decrease this down to 50,000 because I think that's a bit too much for our, for our guy to push it around a bit bosh there we go slamming it into the wall killed it um, so how about we change this a little bit more and we actually make it so that the the projectile itself shatters it rather than does that well the reason it's flying away from the uh the lovely lovely um projectile is because the projectile is set up to add impulse rather than to add force so what we're going to do is we're going to right click inside the the uh, projectile we're going to add force at location and we're just going to collision component we'll get rid of the collision component and then from the event hit we'll put the other component into here the character location into the location and then this get velocity multiplied by 100 into the force the branch in and then after the branch destroy the actor and now Instead of flinging this everywhere, it will do a bit of damage.
Come on, break. There we go. Now, that damage threshold might be a little bit too high for this. So, let's open him back up again. There we go. We'll lower that down to maybe 100, just so that we can see this. And there we go. Now you can see how the <clears throat> the projectile is actually able to blow this up. Let's uh, do this some more. There we are. Still a bit too little amount of damage. Let's see, 10,000 maybe? So we don't want it. Tell you what. I don't like the way that it's not on the floor. There we go, and poof. Oh. Oh, that, that little tip was just enough to break it. How annoying is that? So we'll say 20,000. So I don't want it to break on rolling over. Oh. There it goes. <laughs> of course, like if we didn't want this to actually rotate, we can go in and we can uh we can lock its uh constraint. Where's our constraints? We I know we've got constraints here somewhere. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. It's under physics. Where's physics gone? Here we are. Uh, why are you not giving me constraints? Hmm. Curious. These have got constraints, right? Or am I just being blind? Ah, no. Okay, so we don't get constraints with a, uh, a destructible mesh. Unless it's inside here. Let's see. Uh... Ooh. No, we don't have constraints. Okay, so we can't constrain it to not roll around. Unless we were to do it in a blueprint, I suppose. Uh, but we're not doing that. So, yay. Anyway. There we are. I mean, we could probably increase the weight a bit more. And that would stop it. So if we could just bump the weight up. Die, cube! Haha. <laughs> yeah, just increasing the weight's probably a good way to go. I mean, we don't really want this to bounce at all, so we could ramp it up to its absolute max. Although that seems to still be really, really bouncy. Ah, there we go. But there you can see uh, a way that we can make sure that this can break via projectile, which is actually really nice. And it should still work with gravity, although we need to just change this up a little. What am I going to do? I'm going to turn up, start awake on, and then poof. Nice. So when you decide to turn wake on, I mean, you can do that through blueprinting to, to set to awake. Um, so, you know, right now that will just float. If you wanted these to be like trigger objects, so you walk to a certain point and they fall and smash, then you just have a blueprint with a trigger box, which would set them to be awake, and they'd fall and do their thing. But there you go, guys. That's how we set up a destructible mesh. I've shown you a few different things here. A lot of it, uh, you know, contradicts itself, so we're not getting a specific thing here. We're getting multiple things all at once. Poof. Um, so take the pieces that you need from this, obviously. Uh, you might not want it to disappear afterwards, you might not want it to start static, you might not want it to work with projectile, uh, things like that. I mean, there you go. Uh, play with it, experiment with it, have fun with it, but that's the, the general basis of how this thing works. Um, I hope that's useful for you, and I'll see you next time.